Yes. Hi, hello everyone and welcome to another week, another healing conversation. My name is Einav Avni, Untangled Coaching, and with me today, uh, Damla Aktekin. Hi, Damla. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Hi, Aina. T tell us a little bit about, about yourself and what is it that we are going to talk about today? Yes. Yeah. Well, I am an inner child energetic wound healer and a crystal healing teacher and a writer. And the inner child healing part, um, what it means is that I help people dive into their inner landscape and um, discover or make connection with what's there, make connection with what they may not have made connection with, and to soothe the parts that need soothing, nourish the parts that need nourishing. Um, so in a nutshell, that's that's what I do. Amazing. Amazing. So I'm, I'm really curious about everything that you just said. Uh, maybe, you, maybe you can start telling us, like, how, how did you find this niche? How, what called you there? Well, um, as in all things, it's my own healing journey that continues to unfold. In 2012, I, I gave birth through an emergency C-section. Um, and in the aftermath of that, it was, um, it was a hard period for me, being and becoming a new mom, and not realizing that I had been coming into the, this experience with an almost empty tank. And when you go into a traumatic transition like motherhood, like surgery, with an almost empty tank, it becomes, it actually brings up anything and everything you haven't healed. So that process led me to um, discover and dive deeper into crystal healing, energy healing, vibrational healing. Um, and within that, I didn't actually start out with wanting or asking to heal inner children in myself or others. But what happened was, um, my own healing um, with these energetic tools that I mentioned, crystals or um, EFT tapping, um, or simply going into the inner landscape of my being through meditation or guided imagery was going so well, I began to offer it to others. And in doing that, I just slowly started to I would be doing my crystal healing, but I would ask them, like, what are you noticing and seeing in your bodies? And they would inevitably take me to a, a place in their body. And I discovered that that place in their body um, was holding something. And as, they, as I guided them through seeing what's there, and to do that, you need to enter into that realm with a different language, through the language of symbolism not just through sensation, but in a language that energetically that part of you can understand. So I still now guide people through going into these places and um, sort of identifying what might be there, what it looks like, what it um, feels like. Is it a pleasant or an unpleasant feeling and so on. And more often than that, as we, we sort of touched upon these places together with my clients and they would explore and soften the surroundings like they might see a rock they might see a metal they might see like this cloth that's wrapped around there um sort of like wrapping around the burn wound and inevitably when we uh work with the surrounding um woundedness inside of it they would see their four-year-old self they would see their seven-year-old self. And sometimes, occasionally, when I ask them, how old is this weight that you've been carrying? They would say, it's older than me. It's as old as time. So that would, to me, indicate um, a multi-generational wound that they're carrying, not just their own. So it's been fascinating. Um, and bit by bit, I, I was sort of gently guided towards calling this inner child healing with the premise that you don't have one inner child. You have multiple inner children, quantum representations of all your life and all your multidimensional existence, living he and breathing here in your body. And not even that, your ancestors' inner children living and breathing in you. Um, and it just so happens that these places in us that are 
perhaps um, slightly numb or slightly in discomfort or they just call out to you and want to be seen and explored. They hold the keys for helping you with whatever you're going through in the now. So that's that's where I'm at now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I really like this idea of actually that there's a multi uh, children, basically multiple children within us. And, and I guess each of them maybe represent a different trauma or event or something emotional that we've been through and, and we're not able to process. So I want to make the distinction that in the way I approach this, I don't see or discover the inner children as wounded they might, <clears throat> excuse me, they might um, surround themselves with a certain pattern, but they're not necessarily broken. They're the versions of you that hold that, um, the ultimate potential of that moment. And, excuse me, and the way I, um, well, this came to me in a dream actually is, the way I see it is, I see your inner landscape when you dive into your body under the skin. That's your Hades. That's your underworld. That's your subconscious. That's your inner children realm. When you dive into it, I see is it as this beautiful night sky with a million stars. And those stars are your inner children. And there may be clouds there that are sort of covering the view or that the inner children have uh, held on to for some reason um, but it's possible to bring out the potential in that moment and to embody your um, the self that you were meant to embody be beyond the trauma what I'm taking from that is is really that you know because we, in in my work I I I like to to help people recognize some of their limiting beliefs and, you know, these things that are, are holding them back because they stop themselves because they say, well, I'm not that kind of person or this always happens to me or, or different, you know, conversations and, and, you know, kind of truth that people create for themselves and now they follow, even though this truth is a little bit, you know, it doesn't have to be to be there. Um, so I really like this idea that it, it what you're saying about the potential of the moment because it's like going straight into that core, call it limiting belief, call it, call it whatever, but into that core where, where it's actually a decision was made and maybe it was an incorrect decision or one that wasn't very helpful. And by going inside of that, you're able to say, to kind of help people to maybe re-examine what they believe about that. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. In a way, the way I'd like to imagine it is this. Let's say you're someone who's wanting to move this direction or towards something you want and need and want to accomplish. If your inner child is has been given the work of holding on to a weight inside of you, like holding on to a rock, or it, the inner child became so contracted, that little mini potential became so contracted and contraction makes us heavy. Expansion lightens up. Contraction is the denseness and an expansion is like the ether or, the, or all the electrons moving around. That's what, I mean, you don't wanna be floating in the air, but you want a certain level of flexibility and flow. So if there are parts in you that are not in flexibility and flow, that's inevitably going to affect each and every um, decision, each and every action. And you may be someone who's able to push through, push forward, carry the weight. And that's going to take a toll so you can accomplish things. But that's going to take a toll on your body, on your psyche. It is possible to... Um, bring more flow, more juice, more expansiveness to the body container so that it becomes more uh, pleasurable to do the things that you do and to want the things that you want. Hmm. So I guess the question, my question, my next question is, is so 
when people come to you, you know, to for, for you to walk with them, is this like so? I guess I guess it's all curiosity, right? You don't really know what you're going to find out. But how how do you how do you get started on that? How how many times will someone come and and how how quickly do you go? How deep? Kind of question. I guess that's more a little bit more about the practical side of all of it. Yeah, they can come as many times as need. Some people need one session. Some people need ten. But um, when someone comes to me and they say, "Damla, let's look at." this in this wound or this in this goal, what's holding me back. Um, what I would say to them is um, the, a, a bigger commitment you can give yourself, the better. Because your system who is in charge, if you, let's say, committed to three sessions, your system is going to say, okay, this is how much we can handle in three sessions. And that's what is going to come up through your nervous system. But let's say you've committed to 10 sessions or more, your system is going to go, ooh, look at all the things we can, <laughs> we can work with, but not all at once because it's, it's spread through the weeks and months. So that to me is, I love that kind of work because that can be really, really um, almost to the point of life changing to have that kind of support and that kind of connection with your inner realm. If you gift yourself that, that's a, that's a huge gift to yourself. And for me as a healer, my contact point, I'm an intuitive empath. I'm a clairaudient. My contact point is I ask what is in the highest and best of this particular session, this moment. I don't need to or want to or have to know everything there is to know about you. But before the session, I sort of tune in and I get a sense of what chakra area, and that's the symbology I work with, what chakra area might be coming up for you. And then I don't even tell the client that because I don't want to direct this or um, influence the session. But more often than not, that does come up anyway in some way. And then during the session, it's a very interactive kind of work. Because again, I'm the guide. I am not the enforcers. I'm the guide that takes you to your inner realm and safely takes you out. And if you hit a barrier, I sort of bargain with the gate creepers. So in that scenario, my gift is to receive moment-to-moment -moment guidance, to hear what to ask next, to um, to have a sense of to see in my inner eye what to help them imagine next, and so on. Uh, and that can be um, magical. It sounds magical. <laughs> <laughs> and and so so, I understand that it's like a um, discovery, right? Step by step going on this discovery when they visualize or understand what is you know where they're going on that journey together with you um so and you mentioned that you don't tell them so you 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 have an idea of what is going on and what to ask next next but but you're not obviously telling them what you are seeing you're allowing them to discover it for themselves yeah yeah okay here's the the caveat um if you've never entered into that realm, if you've never, or if you're someone who is not quite in touch with your body, we can't magically enter into the realm of imagery. Like we first need to bring your body to a state of calm, safety, and trust. And that's developed, that's cultivated. Mm -hmm. And I can help you do that to a certain degree. Um, but if it's really painful for you to even think about feeling into your body, or if it's like highly emotional to even think about uh, what you might discover, there's a lot of fear there. So that's a different kind of work. I tell people that um, they might need some... Um, some body therapy first or some cognitional therapy to be even able to say, let me discover the magic. 
but it because it's scary whatever you put there as a protective mechanism you put there because you were in fight or flight you thought you were going to die or if if it wasn't an actual life or death situation it it felt like that to you mm-hmm. so that can be quite scary for people to feel into um i find that People who have um, meditative practices, I, I have a crystal healing membership, for instance, which is all about putting yourself in a loving container and the, the healings are silent with soothing music and you just absorb the goodness and you let your body expand and feel safe. So you may need to do that kind of work for a while before we, we can dive deeper. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's very very it takes a lot of patience it takes a lot of tenderness this kind of work again there are different levels of um preparedness i want to say and different levels of for instance i might get someone who's been meditating for years they're they're good they're ready to go they're going to jump right in and, and we're going to dive deep But if you're someone like you're new to this kind of work, we're going to take it slower, which is why I don't tell people, we're going to dive into your third chakra and uncover (laughs) all this stuff. It's not what that's about. It's about um, meeting you where you are and guiding you the best I can. And even if we move things, like we expand things one millimeter, um, like it, that might not seem like much to some people, but that's a huge relief for other people. Hmm. So, and can you share with us some some examples of of kind of a journey that people have taken with you? Yes. So, <clears throat> occasionally, people also see um, their loved ones who may have passed away. So, um, and in that case, there might be um, gifts from those loved ones. <coughs> Meaning, whoever, whatever shows up in your symbolic realm of the body is going to bring in valuable gifts. Um, so let me sit with how much how much I want to share because these these healings are private private to people. Absolutely. Um, but in one of them, I recently <clears throat> worked with someone who um, just had had um, surgery, and we we moved through the the density and we found the inner child, and her inner child wanted to lie down. <clears throat> and um, here is this beautiful young woman sitting up straight, and but she's just she's just had surgery, and um, and I pointed out that her inner child just wanted to lie down, and she smiled. She said yes. She she'd been trying to do some extra work. She'd been trying to push through things, but she said, "I'm feeling like I need to lie down. I think I'm going to lie down after this." So that was a beautiful, beautiful gift, right? Something you realize, oh, I can tell you, you need to lie down versus you in your own journeying, see your inner child lying down comfortably. (laughs) That's going to give a more tender, deeper message. I guess it's it, it feels like about permission. Not just permission, like you know what you need. You know what you need. We, when you make contact with the parts of you that need to be seen, that was the part of her that needed to be seen that day. And And if you listen, so it doesn't just end with the session. There are actions that you can take. And, um, and it becomes easy to take those actions when you say, wow, like I've been pushing myself versus, um, yeah, it does come to let me allow, I'll just, I'll just allow myself to rest. Yeah. I guess it's because yeah, sometimes we, 
as you said earlier, right? We push through. We don't <laughs> we don't listen. We don't we don't take into account you know messages that we already have coming in from within us. And yeah. Maybe in this way, when this voice is actually coming out, you're able to say, okay, there is a reason why I was hearing these things or why I thought yeah. you know, I had the feeling of doing something. One more I will give example. In another journey, um, this woman who partnered with me went inside and she, she saw a sort of heaviness in her heart that we moved through and worked with. And, and I said, um, <clears throat> um, who does this remind? And she saw a little heaviness at the back of her head too. So we worked with that. And I said, who does this remind you to? And she said, her father. So once we moved the heaviness, which was a mix of anxiety and other things, she saw this beautiful cape around her neck. And she told me that her father was her hero and had always been. And I said, who is the hero in your family? Who is the one that everyone depends on? And she said, I am. And then I said, um, what a beautiful gift your father the father that lives in you is coming to bring you because you don't get to be just a hero. You get to be a human with natural anxieties and emotions. His father also had natural anxieties and emotions. So she's allowed to have those as well. So this kind of gift, like I can't predict or I can't, but it's that's the magic of the work is um, like she's going to take that with her her entire life. Yeah. So in the times that she's having a hard time, she'll remember her dad also did too. And she um, she doesn't have to be perfect. Mm. I like that. So when, when when did you realize that you had this the gift of uh, is it clear audience? Is that is that how you say it? Claire audience, yeah. Well, when I was working with uh, and co-creating with crystals, <clears throat> initially I relied on uh, pendulums and muscle testing. And very soon, <coughs> excuse me, very soon I realized I sort of had a sense of what the pendulum was going to say before it said it. So then I sort of put it aside <laughs> and it's been um it's been developing ever since and again the intention part plays a huge um a huge part of it and then i think motherhood had something to do with it you know everything heightens i felt that during my pregnancy um something about coming into um that transition, living through something your your whole female ancestors lived through, um, something about the protectiveness of the mother, it does heighten things. And then I do know now there's a lot of research around a sustained um, meditation and contemplative practice, which is what I have. I heal, meditate with crystals every single day. Um, since 2012 so that's gonna um that's gonna help you that kind of cultivation is gonna help you uh connect with whatever natural tendencies and abilities you already have and maybe maybe this is a good time for me to ask a little bit about the crystal healing and the meditation that you do because uh, i mean i've got crystal on my shelf somewhere and uh <laughs> But I, I don't I don't understand enough about it. Maybe maybe you can share with us a little bit about that. Um, <clears throat> that starts with the question, what are crystals? And as I do dove into that question, I realized um, first of all, they are ancestors in the sense that they're your building blocks. Anything that contributes to your life in some way is an ancestor. And we are made up of crystals. 
our bones are minerals, our DNA is a liquid mineral, our fascia looks a lot like the inside of a quartz crystal. And they are piezoelectric. They, you can create an electrical charge through touch. We are piezoelectric. Mm -hmm. um, our fascia system is. Um, so all of these similarities um, and the fact that the crystals have a longer lifespan, they've been around for millennia. And, and also the fact that they're vibrational beings, which we are vibrational beings, beings in the sense that you can call them structures too. Mm -hmm. But they're very, very close relatives to us, very close relatives. And what I discovered is that, um, which people have known through mil millennia, it, it was just new to me, that uh, they don't just get activated through touch, they act get activated through intention, just like us. And through intention, you can ask them to amplify an intention, you can ask them to help you connect with a life stream, like a creative journeying. You can help to connect with your best, most abundant self to bring that to life. So, and then the question becomes, okay, so here is this relative who is um, really as powerful as you, but we forget how powerful we are, right? We get to, we get to be reminded by them. So who is, here is this relative. Um, do I want to approach this relationship as um, one of trust, respect, companionship? Dare I even say love, uh, reverence, their ancestors, um, of mutual collaboration? versus let's say you're a crystal a now i pick you up and i say what can you do for me what can you do for me how can i use you so that's a different kind of relationship and i discovered again which is new to me it's not new to humanity at all i discovered that if i approach them with that reverence with the love even from the way that I hold them, the way I place them somewhere, the way I interact with them, the way I say thank you at the end of uh, crystal healing, they began to open up in me and for me avenues I didn't even know existed. They began to soften me, soften my container, which the container is a crystal. And they entered into my life where I was completely um, not in touch with my body. My body was strange. It was painful to be in my body. But here was this being structure that looked like me. That was me, in a sense, or relatives that I could hold in love. And that love intention radiates back to you. So crystals become placeholders or guides for you to explore yourself. And I don't tell people what crystals to get. I tell people to, to see what they're drawn to, what they um, quote unquote resonate with. And then I don't tell people where to place those crystals because one day that crystal may find um, comfort and delight in your on your throat. The other day it might do that and on your heart. Hmm. They're not limited, just like we are not limited. And I also don't care now about how big or small the crystal is because each and every crystal, let's say a rose quartz is connected to all the other rose quartz, quartz C's, <laughs> um, because they're kin, they're also related to and in contact with all the other crystals in the multiverse. Mm -hmm. 
so are you. And the oneness that every single spiritual tradition teaches is that I have a DNA, anything, the, the trees that I see outside and everything, um, the bacteria on the in the earth, there's bacteria and viruses in the air. Um, any other human being, any other animal being, I am in constant contact with. That's the other lesson the crystals give us. You're in constant contact with. And you get affected by and you can affect. So it doesn't matter how your crystal, uh, how big or small your crystal is. If you're willing to approach them. So again, it's not about the what, where, when. It's about how. It's about how you approach them. Do you approach them lovingly? Do you have an intention of not just benefiting yourself or or an in versus an intention of let's get in relationship with each other and let's see what we can discover together? So when people come to you, how, how do you decide on the actual method of, of healing and, and treating like crystals versus um, the meditation, the visualization that you've mentioned before? It's a little bit of everything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the moment. Again, it's a completely intuitive process. Mm -hmm. And so people, so is it really just about coming to see you and walk with you? Or do you have any tips for people listening about something that they can already do by themselves to, to help connect a little bit more with the, the messages that you're giving and just something that they can do to to help move themselves forward in some way? Yeah, we can do a lot, right? We can begin to treat every single object around you with love and respect. You can begin to open and close your dishwasher, not as a hateful act, but as an act of um, thankfulness. You can, uh, if you're interested in crystal healing, I do have a, I have a free mini course on my website, edropofom.com, crystal healing myths. That we could be probably put the link to that later. That could be your starting point. Um, I also have a um, crystal healing journal, which is a 21 day journey where I guide you through um, lovingly select your crystals and lovingly talk to crystals instead of saying where do I put you you ask the question where where would you like to go today <laughs> what other crystals would you like to be near so it's a different kind of relationship um, but that kind of relationship doesn't just have to be with crystals as I was saying this holds crystalline elements mm -hmm. the monk your um, floors, my floors are wood, so they are. They have DNA, so I can really, I can talk to them. So it's a bit like going back to your childhood self and saying, "What if everything was alive, and I'm alive with them? How would I treat my environment, myself, um, the people around me?" But not just the people, but everything around me, which inevitably comes back to you and how you treat yourself. So that's what you can do today. Yeah, that that's that, what what that brings up to me is is um, I guess yes, absolutely. You know, if you if you take that idea that everything is connected, and if you approach everything with love and and kindness and and curiosity, it, it's a it definitely brings you to a different kind of level. But I guess what comes up for me is that a lot of the time, the people that I'm in touch with, you know, in my clients and, and others, I notice that there is a, a different kind of angle. It's more about some sort of a confusion of, I know that things are not working out. I know that there is something that I'm not addressing. There is something inside of me that I feel is blocking me. And, and so, 
it, it just feels like a different mindset. Like if I'm if I'm on on the outer side and I'm you know I'm treating everything with love and and all of that, like you said, it feels more. It, of course, it feels harmonious. It feels like very calm and very connected kind of being. But I'm more curious, a little bit more curious about the um, how how can the, this when you're in that place of confusion of not knowing how to move forward and not knowing how to shift from that place where you are because sometimes we recognize that we're not where we want to be but we have no idea how to move forward yeah. so you rely on practices but let me go back there are distinct stages the first stage isn't what you're describing the first stage is you don't even know that you have wounds mm -hmm. you either ignore them you're or you're ignorant you feel like life you had as a child was normal Mm -hmm. Of course you get beaten. Of course you are spoken to that way. That's the way it is. So you don't even recognize what you lived through as a wounding. And then the second stage is what you describe, which is you realize that you have wounding. You are in pain and you are um, wanting things to change and shift, but you don't yet know how. Mm. You don't yet know how. You don't have the tools. In that stage, you begin to get curious. You get curious. That was me reaching for crystals, reaching for sound healing, reaching for EFT, like anything I could get my hands on. I was reaching for it. And you, whatever you reach for, you stay for a bit. That's the third stage. When you find something that works even a little bit, like a millimeter, you glue your hands to it like a super glue mm -hmm. and that's the practice like a super glue the practice becomes the refuge even if you don't feel good because your tank is when your tank is empty when the bottle is empty you're not going to feel the one drop you put in it until it accumulates again that's the readiness part that i was talking about earlier but you keep doing it you keep doing it you keep doing it until Ah, like one third full. Mm. What a difference that makes in my nervous system. How full, oh my goodness. Like close to full, like you feel like enlightened. And then the next day something shitty happens. Yeah, that's the fourth stage, which mm. is now you know that life is constantly going to throw you things that will empty your tank. You take on the responsibility for filling up the tank. Um, and you begin to, at this point, you also, because you filled up so much, at this point in the fourth stage, you begin to take delight and comfort in, and pleasure in those um, practices. For me, that practice is crystal healing. Like I said, I go into that half an hour container that I pre-recorded with loving intention and that I do every day, mm -hmm. every day. And that's pleasurable to me. I can feel my entire body relax. And that's not to say I'm not going to be like on a 10 stress level two minutes later. I might be, mm -hmm. but I know there's a place I can come back to. And then you also in this stage, you also don't complain. You don't say, oh my God, this, this practice isn't working. These crystals are wrong. This seat, too uncomfortable. This meditation room, oh my, it sucks. Like everything sucks. Mm -hmm. No, that's just the emptiness talking. There's nothing wrong with the practice. There's nothing essentially wrong with you. You're just not resourced enough to expand and enjoy what's here. And then the last stage is you say, look at what these practices have brought to my life. I want to bring the, this to other people's lives. And that's where I'm at. It right. doesn't mean I go constantly to the first one every single day. And my responsibility as a healer is to say, Look what wound is coming up today, every single day. 
How can I resource myself so that I can be there for others? And it doesn't mean that you have to practice a healing art. It can also be you can um, use this model to say, let me be present and there for a loved one. How can you be there for a loved one when you're running on empty? You can't. How can you be there for your children? Does this answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like what you're saying about the empty tongue kiss. How can you be for, for others? Actually, a lot of the time you don't even notice others when you are on empty tongue, right? It's a, it's a, it's a very kind of, it's all about me if my, if my tank is empty. Um, so, Thank so. you for asking that. That's a, that's a beautiful question, which illustrates we are all on different stages of healing and there is nothing wrong with where you are. It's just you have to recognize that there needs to be an element of willingness to continue on your healing path and to not blame, to not find fault in what you may have been handed to as a gift. Like you're listening to this conversation. What are you going to do next? <clears throat> do you have crystals? Can you begin to connect with them? Or is there any other healing, nourishing, resourcing practice that you can add to your or your life a little bit more? Or if that's not happening for you, can you reach for support from someone like me or from another methodology? How can you add that support, that resourcing to your life? So that's the question. And but this is this is really come to this to this understanding of how how do you see things because if if you are in victimhood then you don't see that right you're really in the problem and it's really really hard to say to actually recognize that there's that maybe what you're going through is temporary and maybe there's ways like you say reach for help or, or do something differently but but if you are not in victimhood and you recognize that actually i am here right now where, where i need to be and you know it's it's just a a part of my journey so when you start looking at it as recognizing that actually this is not your resting place actually it's just a part of the journey you're able to start asking different questions as you said reach out um for different you know for support from different sources um, exactly yes yeah it's it, i think it's i think it's fascinating um and that's yeah. what you do, and that's what I do, is to remind people they have the power inside to change things and to, to exist in a different way. Yeah. Great. Uh, so tell me, um, is there anything else that I didn't ask or didn't mention that you would like to, to talk about just before we, we finish? Be gentle with yourself. I mean... Um, I'm going to get emotional about this because I know how much effort and love it takes to um, even heal like a tiny mini wound, how much gentleness it takes, um, so much time so much cultivation, practice, and support that it takes. Um, so the state of the world breaks my heart because of that. What's happening? What's going on? But we also have to accept. I have to. I'm on that journey of accepting that. Um, like so that, like you said, there's going to be a percentage of the population who, who lives in victimhood and inflicting wounds on each other over and over again. But my wish and dream for the listeners is that you not be one of them and you start that with yourself. Um, again, how can you give to yourself what you need now, um, today, even if it's just a little bit of just a little bit of gentleness and tenderness, like we were talking about, maybe letting yourself lie down for a second or two, mm. listening to this interview. Does, does it feel good? Like, did it feel like nourishing to you? Did you learn something new? Um, sharing that with someone else and like allowing yourself to, to feel that fullness 
And all those little drops, um, hence the name, a drop of om. Um. <laughs> it's my <laughs> website and business. They make a difference. So tend to your om, um, tend to your uh, droplet, which is your body, and let that radiate out into the world. Mm. That's beautiful. And and I'm really, I'm left with, um, you know, with thirst to, to finding out more, to, to really understand a little bit more about uh, the journey. Uh, and and the way that you you know in in how how this this journey is uh, when you work with people, um, so we we're going to share the links to your socials and the, the course that you mentioned as well. And the, if anyone wants to reach out or join the course or the membership or anything like that, then of course very much welcome to. Um, great. So I'm I'm going to. Um, get a chance to to continue talking with you a little bit in a minute yeah so, let me yeah. say one more thing so we yeah. you're welcome to move towards like if you're drawn to crystals definitely there's a lot that i talk about you can find on the website i have a quiz called your energetic wounds so depending on when you are in where, where you are in your journey there may be wounds that you're not even aware of so that to me is the very first step go take that quiz it's free and it'll tell you, it'll give you a little glimpse of what might be going on underneath the surface. Mm. Sounds like a very good place to start. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so thank you for that. And I was just going to say, uh, so if anyone has any questions or queries or anything, um, they can reach out directly to you or leave some questions and comments underneath the post where it will be. Uh, and we can continue with the conversation as, as it is. Thank you. This has been a pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for Thanks. listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.